The company SpinLaunch wants to launch satellites into space using a centrifuge and it wants to do so completely emission free using 4 times less fuel and at a cost 10 times lower than conventional satellite launches. Initial tests have shown that the technology works at least with a test centrifuge. Even NASA has already signed contracts with SpinLaunch. Now there's a new major breakthrough. SpinLaunch has modified satellites so that they can withstand the extreme accelerations in the centrifuge and with very simple means. In this video you will learn how ingeniously simple this modification was, how far spin launch has come and what the major challenges are. And with that welcome to the German science guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Botton and in Germany we say Los geht's. In 2024 over 10,000 active satellites orbited our Earth. The number has risen dramatically especially in the last 5 years. SpaceX alone has now launched over 7,000 satellites into space. This is probably also because satellites can now be built much cheaper and smaller than a few years ago. By 2030 the number of satellites could even increase sixfold. However, launching a satellite into low earth orbit is anything but cheap. The exact costs vary between satellites for commercial purposes and non-commercial satellites. A study shows that in 2020 launching commercial satellites cost an average of around $5,000 per kilogram. Non-commercial satellites cost around $10,300 per kilogram. That's more than double the cost. According to the study this may be because commercial satellites are intended to generate profits so there's more focus on cost optimization. In addition the rockets used to launch them into space are sometimes cheaper. Private companies now offer such flights for between $4,200 and $6,000 per kilogram. But the company SpinLaunch is now advertising significantly cheaper satellite launches. I've been following the company for years now and I can promise you a lot has happened. But first let's start with SpinLaunch's idea. SpinLaunch has been working on a technology since 2014, more specifically on the orbital accelerator. They want to use it to launch satellites into space, more precisely rockets containing the satellites. Anyone who has ever thrown an object on a string knows the basic principle of the orbital accelerator. When you let go of the string the object flies quite far and that's exactly what SpinLaunch is taking advantage of. We will get to how this rocket slingshot works in a moment but first we need to take a closer look at its design. SpinLaunch wants to use a centrifuge for satellite launches. It's in a cylinder that's 91 meters across. There's an arm in the middle and the rocket with the satellite is at the end of the arm. There's also a release tunnel on the cylinder. Like the name says the rocket leaves the centrifuge through the tunnel. At the end of the tunnel where the rocket leaves it there is a high speed airlock. This is extremely important. To understand why let's take a closer look at how the centrifuge works. It can be accelerated to 8000 kilometers per hour. That is almost six and a half times the speed of sound in air. It is powered by an electric motor. When the appropriate speed is reached the rocket detaches from its mount. This is ensured by an automatic mechanism. It is then released into the release tunnel and flies through this high speed airlock at the end. And as the name suggests it closes again extremely quickly according to spin launch faster than we can blink. And that's very important. It maintains the vacuum in the cylinder and that enables multiple launches every day. According to the company the goal is to launch satellites weighing up to 200 kilograms into space. The aim is to reach altitudes of 100 kilometers. For comparison the lowest satellites are located at an altitude of 180 kilometers which is referred to as low earth orbit. Satellites do not actually fly any lower than this because the influence of the atmosphere is too great. Of course this also applies to the satellites that SpinLaunch wants to launch into space. That is why the rockets still have engines that take over then. In fact there's currently only one test version of the orbital accelerator, the suborbital accelerator. It has a height of 50.4 meters and reaches speeds between 1300 and 8000 kilometers per hour. It is designed to be able to launch objects 7600 meters high which is only a fraction of the targeted 100 kilometers. A test launch of a rocket using the suborbital accelerator took place in 2021. However only 20% of the centrifuge's power was used. Nevertheless the rocket flew over 3 kilometers high during the test which is still very little compared to the planned 100 kilometers. Since 2022 there have been repeated tests with other rockets and at other speeds. Incidentally the company wants to use the rockets multiple times. In fact 
SpinLaunch has already signed a contract with NASA. The suborbital accelerator is also located at a NASA test site. But other companies are also interested in the technology. By 2021 alone, 110 millions have already been invested in SpinLaunch. The money comes from Airbus Ventures and Google Ventures, among others. But what exactly are people hoping to achieve with this technology? According to SpinLaunch, their orbital accelerator has two major advantages. I already hinted at the first advantage at the beginning, the costs. The company advertises that launching a satellite this way is simply 10 times cheaper than conventional launches. The CEO of SpinLaunch talks about less than $500,000 per launch. If you do the math, you will see that with a 200 kilogram payload on such a rocket, the cost comes down to $2,500 per kilogram. As mentioned, other private companies now offer such satellite launches for around $4,000 to $6,000 per kilogram. This means that spin launch is not 10 times cheaper as promised, but it is still significantly cheaper to be fair. But here comes a very important point right away. In the past, there have been flights to low Earth orbit for less than $1,500 per kilogram. However, inflation, among other things, has caused prices to rise, making them significantly more expensive now. But prices would probably fall if spin launch is really able to offer these cheap launches. I mean, it's competition, it's a market mechanism. So maybe this would make spin launch again less interesting. But let's take a look at how the company wants to save money. The company appears to be saving costs primarily in terms of the weight and size of the rockets. In conventional rockets, fuel accounts for a large part of the weight. And spin launch now needs significantly less of it. The company also mass produces its own satellites. These are also supposed to be inexpensive. This probably also plays a role in the overall cost. Unfortunately, I was unable to find a detailed breakdown of the cost. But the company advertises a second advantage, low environmental impact. According to the company, spin launch rockets require four times less fuel than conventional rockets. By launching with a centrifuge, they pass through the critical layers of the atmosphere completely without fuel. Spin launch is probably referring to layers that have a major impact on the climate as the company advertises how climate friendly the technology is. Only if this happened, then do the engines ignite. If the rockets can actually be launched 100 kilometers high, they leave the ozone layer and the layers that influence the weather behind. The impact on the climate would therefore actually be significantly lower. Apart from the lower fuel consumption, Spin Launch operates the centrifuge with electricity. If the electricity comes from renewable energies, such a launch is of course much more environmentally friendly than burning huge amounts of fuel. Until the engine takes over, the launch is completely emission free. However, it must also be said that rockets do not actually produce that many emissions. Depending on the sources, space travel accounts for only 0.01 to 0.02% of total aviation emissions. And for the ones who already know my videos, this is a point where we have to take a deep dive into the big hurdle that is a part of my video where we take a look at the limitations of an innovation. Just in between, maybe you want to subscribe to the channel. This helps the channel to grow and produce more high quality videos. Okay. Let's get to the hurdle. At such high speeds in the centrifuge, the satellites are exposed to extremely high g-forces. 1g is a normal force acting on a body on Earth. A race car driver experiences up to 5g in corners and astronauts up to 10g in the Russian Soyuz capsules. And that is already a lot. Satellites in the centrifuge are subjected to 1000 times that amount. So 10,000 g. I think it's easy to imagine that this can have a huge impact on the technology. It can cause solar collectors to break, batteries to start burning or processors to fall off. But Spin Launch has now found a solution. They placed a satellite in a centrifuge and tested how much G it could withstand. The satellite was developed by Portland State University. Even without modification, the satellite only broke at 7600 G. To reach 10,000 G, the scientists simply modified the satellite. First, they packed the batteries into carbon fiber tubes. NASA also does this in some cases. Then they simply, and this is really simple, glued the batteries, electronics and circuit parts together. And finally, and this is so smart, the scientists aligned the batteries so that the g-forces acted along the long side. This means that the batteries are aligned like a kind of a column. After that, the satellite really did survive the 10,000 G without damage. And I think that's really amazing considering it was achieved with such simple modifications. 
Another important point in my opinion and in the big hurdle is the extreme heat when the rocket hits the air. Because in order to reach the planned altitudes, it has to launch much faster. I haven't really found anything on this topic in the spin launch material yet. We actually requested an interview, but haven't received a response yet. If anything happens, I will keep you posted. Of course, I will pin a comment and maybe make another video. But since there are still some unanswered questions, I'm skeptical that spin launch will ever catch on. Mainly because of safety concerns and because there's still no information about tests in which the rocket has come close to reaching this altitude of 100 kilometers. Nevertheless, it is of course an exciting idea that initially arouses interest. And who knows whether the development might not also have spin-offs for areas other than space travel. I recently made a video about hypergravity machines, which includes a spin launch machine. I will link it here if you want to take a look at it. And also feel free to write in the comments what you think of spin launch and whether you believe the project will succeed. And also here's another video. Many of you haven't seen it. It's about tires. And I know tires don't sound so interesting, but these tires give you 10% extra range with a pretty smart move. So also take a look at this and I say Auf Wiedersehen, which means goodbye in German, your Jacob.